Good evening, everyone. Let's pray. Wonderful and gracious God, we thank you for this time together. We welcome you into this place. We ask that you will have your way. Please dispense wisdom on those who are gathered, especially our village board members and our mayor. Help us to understand that we are your family, we are part of your family, and the work that we do is not for our glory, but for your glory. Have your way in this meeting. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Present. Trustee Wilson? Present. Trustee Udris? Present. Thank you, Denisha. Move on to the uh, open to the public, agenda item number I'm sorry, I, I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm nervous at this stuff. That's okay. <laughs> so anyway, no, uh, you know, we're just here on the Devonshire. We got all the facts last, you know, and we had, you guys are great to come out and take a look. And I think you got all the facts. Yes, sir. So, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? If not, we'll move on to the consent agenda because I have a motion to approve this. I'll make that motion. I'll second. second that. Second, okay. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Yes, to clarify, that is for the minutes of the regular board meeting from July 8, 2020, and the bills. The roll call is J um, Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Pop. Really quick, just wanted to um, reiterate, as we have been for the past couple months regarding the census, of course, it is very important. And if anyone has not yet gone ahead and filled out the information, please do so. You can go online and fill it out at 2020census.gov. Also, I just wanted to follow up from um, Trustee Blue's last question at the last meeting in reference to the timeline. Um, for the deadline. So from July 1st to September 3rd, the census takers will be working uh, with the administrators of the colleges, senior centers, prisons, and other, and other facilities um, that house large groups of people, um, of course, taking precaution as well, but to make sure that everyone is counted between August 1st and October 31st. The census takers will interview at homes, and that's when they'll go door to door, so that's when, uh, so that the residents are aware as well. And um, for those that have not responded to the census forms or online, and in December, of course, is when the Census Bureau will be delivering um, the appropriate counts to the President and Congress as required by law. So it will continue until the end of December. As of March 31st of next year, by that date, the Census Bureau will be sending the re and redistricting uh, the counts to the states and different um, municipalities. End of report. mention that I went to the uh, my dentist today and uh, before I got even on the step there was a metal sign big letters stop and it had a picture of a person with a mask on and underneath it it says masks are required I thought it was great that's just my take on it okay it gets your attention uh, the other item is uh, 
we drafted a, Larry helped draft a, li a, a letter, uh, which the, the board has approved, and uh, Larry's going to read that letter right now. Can I, can I say something sure. first? Yeah. I was asked to set this up just a little bit, if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to talk to you tonight about something that happened 11 years ago. In that year, Reverend Dr. Hunt moved his congregation here to Moni. At that time, there was on this board a person or persons that spread hate and fear about this congregation coming to town. They spread that fear to our residents of this village. None of these persons, I want to emphasize, are on this board today. So this is, these trustees or whoever it was are no longer on the board. And the letter that our council will read will fill in some of the details. But why do we bring this up now? Well, for, me, for one of the reasons is that uh, for us to move forward together in unity, we must acknowledge our past. We must deal with it, and then we can move on. So speaking of unity, think about what binds us together as residents and as Americans. Now in residents, many of us know each other, and we're neighbors and friends, and those things bind us together. But may I say that there's uh, in these tumultuous times, in these uh, these record times that we're having, I'm reminded of Dr. King. And Dr. King, one of the things that he did was hold our country to the standards uh, to, or to live up to the principles that are enshrined in our founding documents. Namely, uh, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Those are the things that bind us together as Americans. On a personal note, I've known Dr. Hunt and many members of his congregation for many years. I can, we, we've prayed together, we've worshiped together, uh, we've had meals together, and um, for uh, a musician like myself, we've even played music together, myself and musicians of my church and his church. And let me tell you, it's been a beautiful thing to get to know him and his congregation. And Moni is a better place because of New Hope Christian or Community Christian Church. Okay, Larry. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. This is directed to New Hope Christian Community Church regarding past events, dated July 22nd, 2020. Dear members, I'm writing this letter to you in my capacity as the Chief Executive Officer of the Village of Moni. Please note that all my fellow Village Board members are fully supportive of the rationale behind this letter. We, as a Village Board, have always been very appreciative of your attendance at all of our Village Board meetings and the opening of each meeting with a prayer. The prayer and the words from a respective relig religious leader seems to put everything in perspective very quickly. The primary purpose of this letter is to address an issue that arose in June of 2009 involving Reverend James Hunt and his congregation, the New Hope Christian Community Church. The incident in question centered around the leasing of property previously occupied by Trinity Church located at 4700 West Court Street. Following the execution of the lease, Reverend Hunt was notified that he would be required to obtain a special use permit via the provisions of the Moni Village Zoning Code. The Zoning Code delineates the process that must be followed with respect to the zoning relief. Such a process usually will take two months depending on the complexity of the matter. In Reverend Hunt's situation, this process, unfortunately, lasted roughly six months, which could have jeopardized his entire transaction. Furthermore, the inspection process was called into question. After the review of the records and notes of the special use permit request, the underlying process was not and should never be considered acceptable in our community. Upon behalf of myself and every elected official, please accept our apology for any action 
which may have not met our standard of fair and efficient government process. As we recite the Pledge of Allegiance before each meeting, I and my fellow village board members acknowledge our obligation to uphold our responsibility to guide and represent all of our constituents. We do our best and we hope that whatever our decision is made relative to an issue, no one can question our intentions or motives. I would, be re I would be remiss if I not express our appreciation to Reverend Hunt. Each member of the Moni Alliance of Churches plays a vital role in our community and Reverend Hunt and his congregation are no exception. With the initial problems Reverend Hunt encountered, he could have decided to seek another location. Thankfully, he decided otherwise, and for all that, Moni has benefited. Reverend Hunt and his congregation have always offered their assistance to the village and as residents throughout the years. The village is very fortunate to have New Hope Christian Community Church called Moni home. In summary, it is my hope, along with the entire Board of Trustees, that this letter closes an open wound relative to the 2009 matter. We appreciate the services and support each Moni Alliance of Church member provides to the village. We look forward to working with you and will continue to strive to make Moni a community that will grow and prosper. Thank you for your time and consideration. Very truly yours, Mayor James Pop and the Board of Trustees. Thank you, Larry. With that, we'll move on to the administrator's report, David. Thank you, Mayor. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I have a somewhat long agenda this evening. And the first item on the agenda is a TIF payout request, Amazon TIF payout request. The village has received a request from Amazon.com services for a TIF reimbursement payout in accordance with the redevelopment agreement. The request is for tax year 2018, which was payable in 2019. The total amount of taxes paid into the TIF in 2018 was $1,825,332.02. .02. The redevelopment agreement calls for an 80% reimbursement in the amount of $1,460,000. $265.62 and this is from TIF number 5. So the action requested this evening would be a motion to approve TIF 5 reimbursement payout to Amazon.com services in the amount of $1,460,265.62 for tax year 2018. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razik? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you very much. Item two on the agenda there is a municipal budget transfer. Uh, the passage of the fiscal year 21 budget contained a transfer from corporate fund uh, to the Road and Bridge Fund in the amount of $2,440,000. Although this transfer uh, is approved in the budget, the actual act of transferring these funds should be approved by the Village Board. At this time, the action requested is a motion to approve a fund transfer in the amount of $2,440,000 from Corporate Fund to Road and Bridge Fund, and that is for payment of budgeted expenses. I'll make that motion, Mr. Matt. Is there a second? I'll I'll second. second. Any discussion? I'd like to just make a comment to the people out there. As you can hear the numbers, you realize that this was not a cost item for us. Uh, it's the right thing to do, period. Okay, and the board was well aware of the amount and everything. So. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Razik? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Thank you. Item H3 on the agenda is a permission to bid Main Street Water Main. Uh, the Village Board passed an engineering services agreement with Robinson Engineering for the replacement of the Main Street Water Main. Uh, as those engineering services are nearing completion, permission, permission is being requested to go out for bid on the project. The results of the bids will come back before this board for awarding of the same. The Main Street water main replacement is a budgeted item. 
Therefore, action requested this evening would be a motion to authorize bidding of the Main Street Water Main replacement project. Could I have a, a motion on that, please? I'll make that motion, Mayor. Second. I'll second. Did I hear Michael? Is that you, Mike? First and second. Oh, Anthony. second. You seconded it, correct? Anthony second. Anthony second. second. Oh, okay. You made the motion. Then. Yes, sir. Oh, I didn't quite hear you. <laughs> it's the man. A delayed response there. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Yes. Thank you very much. Item H4 it deals with a wheel loader purchase, commonly known as a front end loader. A lot of different names in the industry for it. Uh, Superintendent Krizel is requesting to purchase a wheel loader for public works operations. This item is budgeted for fiscal year 21. In researching the available equipment, Superintendent Krizel found that slightly used uh, equipment is available for purchase. In comparing the differences between new and used, it was determined that a select p used piece of equipment would serve Public Works very well at a cost savings to the village. A comparison was provided for your review. Uh, basically, the new equipment is a uh, 2020 Case 621G wheel loader, and the contract price, uh, which is under state bid, was $147,000. The used piece of equipment uh, through Dennis Leasing LLC was also a 2020 case 621G wheel loader with 54.8 hours of use on it and that was priced at $136,000. Um, uh, the unit uh, was leased for snow removal this past winter and if you recall it was not a very bad winter at all hence the low hours. So uh, both units carry full warranty and include delivery and training uh, on site here. And this equipment will be replacing a 1990 Ford 545C tractor. Uh, Superintendent uh, Krizel is requesting to purchase a used case 621G for $136,000 at a cost savings of $11,000 to the village. Action requested, there needs to be two items here. The first would be a motion to waive the bid process on the purchase of the used 2020 Case 621G wheel loader. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mann. I'll second. second. Yes, ma'am. Any discussion? Thank you. Good question, and maybe this is for uh, Mr. Krizel. Tell me, uh, you know, I noticed you used this for snow removal, and one of the one of the uses of that. What else would you use this for? Actually, that, that snow removal is uh, what it was leased for. Mm -hmm. We certainly could use it for snow removal. Uh, it could, uh, it's used to load uh, vehicles, uh, to carry large, uh, heavier loads. It, the tractor that <coughs> Public Works is retiring has a much smaller bucket. This bucket, uh, I believe, is five yards, uh, three yards, uh, which is much larger and uh, is conducive. Uh, also, uh, quite frankly, due to the amount of work that we do with our own installing our own water main as opposed to farming that out or contracting that out, um, it is the next logical step in the replacement process. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion or questions? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Thank you. The next uh, part of that action request is a motion to authorize the purchase of a used 2020 case 621G wheel loader from Dennis Leasing LLC in the amount of $136,000. I'll make that motion, motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. Any discussion on that? Yeah, I, I would just like to say that I'm really excited about this wheel loader. I mean, a week ago, I didn't know what a wheel loader was, and now I feel like I know it intimately, <laughs> and I just think you can't beat a bigger bucket. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Blue? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Yes. Trustee Wilson? 
Yes. Trustee Idris? Yes. Thank you. Item H5 is uh, the creamery construction bid results. Uh, if you recall, the board authorized bidding for the reconstruction of the creamery. As a result of that authorization, four bids were received. The results of those bids uh, were attached uh, for some review, along with a recommendation letter from project architect, architect Andrew Partek Jr. for the board's review. The, uh, if you look at that letter, um, I will read that. It is, uh, we have reviewed the bids received in regards to the above reference project and recommend that the project be awarded to Integral Construction Incorporated as follows. The base bid general construction was $463,200. Total recommended award would be $463,200. There was an attachment uh, uh, for a current list of uh, construction contracts and public client references uh, and architect engineer references for integral construction. The bids ranged from $839,500 on the high end to $463,200 on the low end. The action requested this evening would be a motion to accept the recommendation of architect Andrew Partek Jr. In, and to award the bid to Integral Construction in the amount of $463,200 for the Creamery Reconstruction Project. Could I have a motion on that? I'll make that motion. I'll second. second. Any discussion? I do have two questions. Where is Integral Construction out of? Do we know? Where are they based out of? Andy, would you mind stepping sure. up to the mic? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, their company is based out of Romeoville. Okay. However, the signer of the bid is actually a resident of Moni. Oh, awesome. Uh, okay. And Correct. then if we, once we approve this, if we approve it tonight, when can they start? Ah, uh, immediately, actually. I have a letter of award in my, in my folder right now. I was anticipating he might be here. So we want to fast track if we can. So it, it will be as soon as possible. Very good. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion for Andy? Thank you, Andy. I, I just wanted to make a statement. It's amazing that you get sometimes scared when you go from 800,000 down to 400 or something. But ironic enough, this company did some work right in this village hall, and we're quite pleased with what they did. So they're very professional. Thank you, Andy, for your recommendation. Uh, anyone else have any comments or anything they want to say? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, second, or the next item, item H6, is Gulf Vista Estates Plat of Easement. Uh, in conjunction with the further development of Gulf Vista Estates, uh, there's a requirement for easement access pu for public utilities and stormwater management. A plat of easement has been presented to the village uh, for execution. The uh, said plat of easement has been reviewed and found to be in order by uh, our, our engineering firm, Robinson Engineering. Therefore, the action requested this evening is a motion to authorize the mayor and the clerk to sign the Gulf Vista Estates final plat of easement dated 5-20-2020. Could I have a motion on that, please? I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. second. I'll second. Any discussion? Not roll call, please. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razick? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. <coughs> Thank you very much. The last item under my report has to do with Moni Venture 3 Plat of Easement. As part of that development of the Moni Venture 3 project, certain easements for utilities, water, a storm sewer and storm water management were necessary. The said plat of easement has been re uh, reviewed and found to be in order by Robinson Engineering and therefore we're requesting this evening a motion to authorize the mayor and the clerk to execute the plat of easement dated 5-29-2020 for Moni Venture 3 project. 
Could I have a motion on that, please? I'll make the motion. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Razek? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. And before I wrap up, there is nothing else on the agenda, but I would like to make a report um, that uh, uh, Director of EMA, uh, Randy Ulaskis, applied for a grant through the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus, and uh, we have been notified that we have been awarded that grant of $10,000. Awesome. And that has to do with the build out of the emergency management agency trailer that this board authorized purchase of <coughs> back on April 8th uh, of this year. So things the plan that was laid out originally is now coming together and uh, uh, Director uh, Ulaskis will follow through with uh, the build out of that trailer and uh, I'm sure that uh, he'll spend, uh, find a way to spend every penny frugally of that grant. <laughs> Randy, thank you very much for that. Good thank job. Awesome. And that concludes my report this evening. Thank you, David. I will move on to the official's report. Public Works, Trustee Horn. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the Road Work, excuse me, the Road Work 2020 project has seen new pavement installed on Herbert, Bruns Road, Orchard Trail, Park Lane, Violet, and Lynn Lane. Tomorrow, Iroquois paving will be on Winfield installing binder. On Friday, crews will be on Anna and Lakeway installing binder. And if the weather cooperates, this is all of course weather permitting, all roads will be paved with at least a binder service surface. Next week, the balance of the roadways that need final surface will be completed. Uh, the 2020 stormwater project has stalled for a little bit as the contractor is waiting for proper storm structures to arrive. We thank residents for being patient during these much needed improvements and we hope to have them back on track very soon. Information on these projects is always, and all scheduled projects, is always available on the uh, Village of Moni website and the Village of Moni Facebook pages. They are updated accordingly as all projects progress. End of report. Thank you, Doug. Move on to Parks and Recreation, Trustee Wilson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. This weekend, Moni Community Wide Garage Sale, July 24th, Friday and Saturday the 25th. Um, it looks like we had a great um, pour out of people that wanted to participate. The list is available. So it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on both both days, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, asking that you keep in consideration social distancing and also mask as we participate in the village-wide garage sale. A lot of programs are starting back up. I'm going to just breeze through them quickly, but you can also refer back to the village uh, uh, website or Facebook page for further. Parks and Rec Department Taekwondo, which is on Tuesdays. So it started, dates are September 3rd through October 22nd. Ages are 5 to 11 from 445 to 530 at the Parks and Rec building here. Cost is $40. Muay Thai, August 25th through the 13th, August, August 25th through October 13th, 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Seven years to adult, so 55 per session. Per, Yoga, Fireman's Park Building also 16 and older. The fee is $50 for both Tuesday and Thursday and $25 for one day per week or $8 per walk and if you're interested. Zumba, Zumba's back, it was kind of popular. I you know people were anticipating looking for that to come back but Saturdays, um, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Fireman's Park, 16 and older, $25 for four weeks and $8 per walk-in. Kids in the park, join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Fireman's Park Pavilion for kids in the park. Each day we will have a fun new craft for the kids to make. Participants could, could make a peanut butter bird feeder, paint a sun chaser, or and a whole lot more. There's going to be lots of uh, activities for the kids, keep them busy, things to do. Um, so come out and check us out. Every Tuesday and Thursday, 
from July 23rd to August 27th, 11 a.m. to noon, Fireman's Park. Ages are 3 to 10. $2 each class. Can't beat it. $2, right? Mm -hmm. Virtual 5K walk or run. So for those who really don't want to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's baby steps, right? Baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get that COVID 5 to 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds off. Uh, using your smartphone or our app, uh, download and log in to, uh, you can track a 3.1 mile or 5K, screenshot your path with your best time, email it to us and uh, with your name. So this is going to be happening from August 1st to August 31st, the month of August, kind of encourage you to get started if you haven't already. It's free also. Free 99, as, as Doug likes to say. They don't have one that's 150 foot by 150 foot. <laughs> I'll do that one. It's a 100 yard dash. <laughs> tie dye shirt day. Come out to Fireman's Park uh, to create a tie dye t shirt and crazy design and colors. Advanced registration is a must in order to get your t shirt so and sizes. So, this is, uh, we have to have it in by your t shirt and registration by August 17th. The day is Monday, August 24th, 11 a.m. noon, or you've got 11 a.m. to noon, two sessions, 11 a.m. to noon, and 5 to 6 p.m. at Fireman's Park. The ages are five years old and up. Bring the family. So this is uh, encourage a family event. Come out, make a T-shirt, little, do a little tie-dye, uh, and encourage kids to come out and hang out with the family in Fireman's Park. Kickball games. We will be hosting a kickball game for the kids and adults. Pre-registration is required so that we can uh, so that we can maintain or stay within the COVID uh, regulations. We want to keep that under 50. All participants will get a free ice cream and after after their game. So bring your own water bottles. Hand sanitizer will be available. Wear a mask and have fun. So this is going to happen at the softball field. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., ages, ages 5 to 8, and then 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., ages 13 to 17. 13 to 17. Uh, the baseball field at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., ages 9 through 12, and 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., ages 18 and up. It's also free. Water balloon, yes. Water balloon, egg toss, and water fun. This is going to be happening Saturday, September 12th. Ages uh, 5 through 8, 9 through 12, 13 through 17, and 18 on up, $2 per person. Town hand uh, print mur mural. Come to Fireman's Park Pavilion and help us decorate a mural with everyone's handprint. Pretty, pretty cool thing. I don't know. Reminds me of the kindergarten days when you, you know, everybody puts their hands on a big, big giant poster, but um, it's something for the kids to do and also for to inspire more community to bring kids out and family are encouraged to come out at the pavilion this is going to take place saturday september 12th 9 a.m to 11 30 a.m at fireman's park and once again free kids scavenger hunt in the park will be taking place monday august 10th 11 a.m to noon ages are 5 to 10 free event movie in the park I know some have been looking for it and asking for it, but it's back. <laughs> Over the Hedge, uh, Friday, August 28th, 8.30 p.m., Fireman's Park. Bring the family for this free event. So be looking for the signs. And like I said, you can always uh, reference the website or Facebook page for additional information or updates. There's a few more events but they're in the future but you can I won't bore you with all the details I'll let you look the uh, look at that at your leisure end of report mayor thank you Michael You're I welcome. think I'll end the uh, trustees reports for way too long. <laughs> give him a time limit <laughs> okay finance trustee Blue. thank you mr. mayor um, a short finance report we um, thank you to mr. bull enough for providing us with our um, comparison budget um, at this time in our fiscal year it's it's certainly all looking good um, and on track so I appreciate you sharing that with me for sure uh, the beautification committee will be meeting uh, on at five o'clock on the 12th of August which I think is our first 
uh, Wednesday, sorry, our second Wednesday in August. So we'll be meeting at 5 p.m. really to catch up and, dare I say it, make plans for the fall. Um, the Library Committee will also be meeting early in August. Um, we haven't set that meeting up yet, but we will shortly. We did put some paperwork in trustees' mailboxes on um, uh, about the library for your uh, for your information also. Um, and that's the end of my report. Thank you, Janet. Move on to uh, economic development. Trustee Razik. No report tonight, Mr. Mayor. No report. Okay. Building services. Trustee Udris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a few things. A friendly reminder to all building owners that the rental license renewals are required on or before August 1st of 2020. The license fee is as follows, one or more rental, un rental housing units, $50 per unit. Uh, please schedule the inspections on or before September 1st, 2020. And just a reminder that the yearly occupancy inspection is included with the renewal cost that's, that I just read. Uh, another reminder to please follow the codes and ensure that all properties are well maintained, ensuring that grass and weeds are cut, trimmed, and removed and do not exceed six inches in height. And again, uh, please remember not to blow the grass and weed clippings onto sidewalks and, and the streets. Makes things very slick for bicycles, motorcycles, and pedestrians. Uh, if you have any questions regarding any home repairs, any improvements, building structures, code enforcement, or just even a need for a building permit, please don't hesitate to give them a call at 708-534-8303, or you can email them at buildingservices at villageofmoni.org. End of report. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. We'll move on to uh, public safety. Heidi Gonzalez. I don't really have a report tonight, so I think uh, the attorney is going to pretty much take care of that in his section tonight, so no report. Okay. Under old business, uh, I'm sorry. What you, oh, I'm sorry. I waited, <laughs> I waited Larry. You didn't say a word. No, that's right. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just trying to move along. I know. I have one item for the board's review and consideration. <laughs> Uh, it's a resolution approving the terms and provisions of the joint efforts of the Illinois Association of Police Chiefs and the NAACP in the Village of Moni. Uh, Chief Kerner was kind enough to read the provisions at the last meeting. Uh, the board uh, authorized myself to draft a resolution uh, reaffirming our position with respect to the uh, resolution. So it's up tonight for the board. Can I have a motion on that, please? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Idris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razak? Yes. The resolution number is 2020-1. And, and just really quickly, I'd like to say thank you to, to the village and to the board for agreeing to do this um, for what our police department has already been doing for the last several years. Thank you. Under old business is uh, the, the Devon Devon Shire project. Uh, I know that uh, we've discussed it before. Uh, anybody have any, uh, well, I need a motion. No, do I need a motion on this? Uh, we wanted to go on record with an answer to them, okay? So I suppose we should have a motion uh, to it, approve it, or disapprove. If I may, Mayor, yes, please. maybe a, a prior history. If the board recalls, uh, this matter was given to the board roughly, I, I want to say, six weeks ago. Um, you know, the board, at that point in time, approved a letter of recommendation to be forwarded to uh, the Will County Land Use Department, I believe it is. Subsequent to that, we received additional information pertaining to the request. I believe uh, the, some of the individuals are here tonight. Uh, at that point in time, the board authorized myself to draft a letter to the Will County Land Use Department, which we did, asking the Land Use Department to table their consideration of the application, which I was believe was two weeks ago. I believe that motion or that letter was accepted by the land use department. So tonight it's up for the board's review and consideration. I am not sure as to the next date it's before the land use department. I believe some of the individuals probably here know, but it is 
something that the board should it's on the agenda so you have the right to talk about it discuss how you want to proceed with it uh, we did notify the land use department that it will be discussed at a future date and today's our future date I'm looking for some comments statements I know the board's leaning in uh, Yes, Mayor. Uh, but go ahead. Uh, Originally, when we had, when it was brought to the table, uh, when we discussed it, there's, um, we we were under one, uh, we were under an impression that there was no resol unresolved issues, that everything was taken care of, and that there, it was pretty much up to code. And um, we learned upon further investigation and actually uh, meeting with the residents and meeting with the owner people coming to the board maybe. yes but you, and like they said you actually had to experience it you had to actually do hands-on go out there and see the property and how it would have an adverse or have a direct effect or impact on the residents which it will and they're not all on board with it as a matter of fact uh, all the surrounding residents are not on board with it and are very uh, adamant about it so there, there's unresolved issues there's no dialogue between the owner and the residents there's something that uh, needs to be worked out with Will County Board as far as cold regulations that uh, for the property to even be considered for the variance so at, at this point at, at least uh, from uh, my perspective that uh, we we should support this uh, uh, the the perm the variance permit usage um, and I, I think that um, the other board members that were there and yeah, experienced I know a it number also of uh, trustees did visit the site, which is good. You got to see it hands on. Larry, did you have a statement we want to make about that or not? Did you um, write anything up um, in case? Uh, I, I think the board has three options depending on you know the position tonight. One, you could take the position that you're going to leave it the way it is, the uh, motion of support. Two, you could amend them, uh, withdraw the initial motion of support and indicate your uh, opposition to it. Or three, you could uh, make a motion to withdraw your support and just indicate to the county board that you're going to remain neutral. Uh, so you have three options. One, to reaffirm your position. Two, withdraw your position and say you're against it. Or three, withdraw your position and indicate you're going to stay neutral. And I, again, I'm not sure the next meeting, but uh, I would probably take some action tonight because, you know, continuances aren't that, doesn't happen that often. Mayor, um, so I also went out to see uh, the property, which is, is really beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful home and land. And um, as Trustee Wilson said, I, I was um, very supportive of it until I read the additional information that came in which seemed to contradict the original information we received and so um, I was encouraged to go out to see it so I did and um, I did meet with uh, many of the neighbors all of whom were not supportive of the venture and um, my thought is that we do not represent those residents. We represent our residents in, in Moni. And um, because um, there is such a conflict, I would recommend the third option uh, that um, Larry mentioned, that we um, rescind the letter and take no position. No position. No position. And we yeah. notify the land use department and yes. they'll put that into the record. Yeah, I, 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 that's, that's, where I, that's my preference. Any other discussion on this? Yeah, I also would like to make a comment because I also was um, had a chance to go out and, and view this property. And again, it's a very beautiful property. I think it, for me, looking in, walking around inside of, of, her, of her building, I was able to see great potential for smaller parties. I was very concerned when she was mentioning groups of 150 to 200 people. Um, and I had some very definite reasons why that concerned me. One of the main ones is when you stand on the edge of the driveway on Harlem and you look to the south, there's a blind hill that's right there. And watching the cars go by the night that we were out there, 45, 50, 60 miles an hour flying down that road, all I could imagine was people pulling out of a party and getting smacked by a car coming down the road and the chances of that when you've got 75 you know 100 cars pulling out of there is is really good um, 
I was also very concerned about the proximity of a couple of the residents to the main driveway that would be used. Uh, and, and again, imagining myself living there, wanting to enjoy a Saturday afternoon and having cars constantly up and down the driveway, the noise of the music that would be coming from, from parties, uh, it's just, it doesn't fit the area um, now that I've had a chance to stand there. And so I also would be in favor of of just, I mean, I'm willing to go with just the no, you know, no, no voice, no opinion, but I'm leaning actually more towards, you know, denouncing it for large parties, especially. Any other discussion? And I'd like to say something too, that um, I have been probably aware of this project since from the very beginning, and I was able to attend can you hear me? Several months ago for the, the grand opening of Devonshire, um, had it all set up and it was obviously very cold out there and things. Um, I am aware and I'll just kind of rebut what you just said, Scott, about the, the hill. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the oppositions from Will County is they want um, a turn lane put in there too. So that ha um, for um, the Will County Road Department, that's something that mm -hmm. is on the table. Um, I myself too um, talked about it with several residents and all I can say to you all sitting here um, I know there's two sides to every story we know we need something like this or could use something like this this kind of venue in our area can I <laughs> let me please finish so let me please finish yeah I would think so all I can ask is I know there's two sides and I just wish we could find a happy medium, a, a compromise somewhere. And I know that the event season um, in our area is about three months long. Um, the ones that you know, Ms. Kelly was looking at to have outdoor events, the larger ones would only be a couple weekends a month through the event season. I understand, you know, the size of the events. That's not going to happen probably for another year or so. So we might have some, you know, time to kind of look at this. And all I ask, um, trying to play the mediator here, is there a possibility that we could try to work together and, you know, come to a happy medium? Are we allowed to speak? No, this was my comment. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, two th one of my concerns is the pub from a public safety aspect of it is and which is also one of the code requirements for the that our will county is requiring is the widening of the driveway at one there's only one access point and it, until the you come up to the property proper and then they swings around back and then you have a horseshoe um, with 70 plus vehicles there it's going to be a nightmare um, that's just my personal opinion from my experience so um, until she even addresses those issues, we shouldn't even be considering the use permit until it's rectified. Also, um, the natural barrier, the tree line, the fence line, you can literally, there's a couple breaks in it, you can literally walk from one yard, the neighbor's yard to their yard and see right in between, which there's a pool on one side and then in the back there's a farm area. But you can literally walk, across, just walk right into the property. So if, she, if the neighbor can walk into their property, the people at the venue can walk into their property, per se. And there's some farm animals and there's issues with feeding uh, ish, the, the animals. And of course, everybody likes to, a pet in zoo, so kids, especially kids. Um, but where they're gonna have the music and the, the actual like dance floor is within eye shot of the house and there's no, barrier there uh, there's kind of a tree line but then it, it disappears so there's no proper barrier say a fence line or a privacy fence or anything up which is alarming and concerning especially to the neighbor directly adjacent to the property um, and it's not up to code so far that they would be able to uh, facilitate the parking there's there's I think currently a dozen parking spaces and we're talking about a venue that's potentially wanted to host over 100. I don't, I don't see it. I don't, it's not there now. So I, it, it would be hard to, to give the nod or to say okay when it's not even 
up to par as f if it was there, if it was in place, then say, okay, they're ready to move forward on this, they're serious about this. But at this point, it's, uh, and I can see the potential, especially in business, you look towards the future and, and wanting to grow your business, but uh, not right now, my opinion. Any other comments? If you can all recall the one, two, or three things that our lawyer has suggested, could I have a motion on one of them? I'll make a motion that we uh, do the letter of objection to this business. Sorry, did you hear that? Yes, yeah, so that's um, to the second one, to remove, withdraw the initial, and the then... Yeah, if I, if I may, I think there should be two separate motions. The first motion would be a motion to withdraw a letter of support, whatever date that was, but a motion to withdraw a letter of support and forward that to the Will County Land Use Department. Okay. Okay. I'll make that motion, Mr. Matt. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on that motion? If not, roll call, please. Trustee Idris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? No. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razek? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Yeah, then if I may, uh, I think the second motion, if I read the board correctly, was a motion to authorize the village to draft a letter to the Will County Land Use Department indicating we are not taking position with respect to this uh, special use permit request. Well, I asked for a, I made a motion for a letter of objection. Okay. Not, a, not a, no comment. So well, you again, no one seconded anything yet. Though. Okay. So I'm right. waiting for a second. Well, whatever the board decides, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Doug has made a motion for a letter of objection. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. You did? Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Hi, Matt, can I just say something? Um, objecting to something that's not in our village is, is really strong. Um, um, I, uh, as a village, if we didn't see all these residents here as a village, we would benefit from that, right? We would benefit from the Devonshire uh, if it were to be up and running. Um, but um, m more importantly, the welfare of the residents are important to me personally, right? So um, I would much rather um, have the third option um, to um, take no position on it. Well, as of right now, we have a motion and a second on I the know. floor. Mm. Is there any other comments? If not, roll call. I would, I would say I agree with Janet as, you know, while I don't see this fitting in that place, I also don't see it, our position as, as a village, we have no jurisdiction over that area. I don't, don't think that it would, would make, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the words to use, but I think just a, a letter of just coming from a letter of support to a letter of, of no comment, I think says enough to the fact that we have concerns and I don't, don't think we need to get involved in it further. I don't think we have the jurisdiction to get involved in it further. Well, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? What can I ask? The motion is to... Yeah, I, I, know. Oh, I know what the motion is, but ca if it doesn't fly, if, we, if it's denied here, do we have the opportunity to make a motion for the third option? Yes. 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 If this one is rejected, yes. So, uh, roll call, please. Trustee Blue? No. Trustee Gonzalez? No. Trustee Orr? Yes. Trustee Razek? Yes. Trustee Wilson? No. Trustee Udris? No. Okay, so that she failed. It's been turned down, so make another motion if you wish. So I'd like to make a motion for the, th the third option. Where we send the, the uh, no position? No position. I'll second, second that. that. I will second that. Okay. Any discussion on that? Like I said, I think that. <clears throat> Just having the motion, just sending a letter of no comment, I think speaks enough to say that, that we don't support this. I don't think that we have jurisdiction to say, 
you can't do it I think that's up to Will County but I think for them to hear us saying that we're backing away from this I think speaks loud enough for them Agreed. any other discussion Trustee Gonzalez present Trustee Horn yes Trustee Razick no Trustee Wilson yes Trustee Udris yes Trustee Blue yes Thank you, board. With that, we'll move on to uh, new business. Hmm. David. Uh, I'm sorry, I had one thing on, under old business, if you don't mind. You know, I neglected to, uh, when, we were, when we were reading this uh, apology letter to New Hope Christian Community Church, the other item I neglected to say was that um, I've been asked to go over there and read this letter to the congregation during a church service so um, that date has yet to be determined but um, if any other uh, trustees or mayor are able to come to that uh, on a Sunday to be determined that would be great thank you okay move on to new actually business. one other thing sorry mr. mayor that I'd like to bring up an old business sure. Uh, the last board meeting, we approved uh, some, a street closure over near, near my home on Apple Blossom for a wedding. Um, one suggestion that I would like to give for that, I mean, I wasn't home for most of the evening, um, but I think when we allow street closures, it would be great if through Public Works or something, we could get them actual barricades that they could use. They were using their own personal vehicles to block off the street. My concern with that is if the police or the fire needed to get in there for any reason, you would have had to find the owners of those vehicles to move them in order for vehicles to get, to get into that street. And I would just like to add that as a suggestion going forward. Let me say going forward, when I went over the first day, they did the tests over at the parking lot. Cars could drive right by the seats the people were sitting on. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute, you guys. You can't do this. You got to rope something off here that's safe, and they got to hold a DJ and got some phones from the village. So you're right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. No. If I would, oh. <laughs> I forgot something. <laughs> okay, meetings adjourned. Meetings <laughs> adjourned. <laughs> uh, this Saturday also is the uh, Love Monet Mobile Shredding uh, Truck. We'll be here at uh, 10 a.m. at the uh, St. Boniface Church. Locations at 5304 West Main Street in Moni. So the uh, shred program, bring all your paper, documents, all the stuff you want to get rid of. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. I don't know if I want to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we'll move on to new business. Hello? Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, Will County Land Use Department notification of map amendment and variance request. David. <laughs> Mayor and board, uh, everything is contained in your packet. Uh, this is another one of those um, uh, jurisdictional things. This falls within a mile and a half of our planning jurisdiction, and therefore uh, we have been uh, noticed of this. Uh, the individual appears to want a map amendment uh, changing the zoning and a variance that reduces the required amount of land area. Uh, you can see in here that uh, how the property is to be used and uh, so forth and there is a map in there showing where the property is located on uh, Pauline Road and that appears to be just uh, west of uh, Will Center, um, South Will Center Road. So uh, it's whatever your pleasure is this evening. Uh, it appears to me that it's a it's a size property size issue on a lot that is already existing uh, so that uh, kind of created the hardship there and um, uh, wants to change that from agricultural zoning I believe so it's up for your review and consideration this evening are there any questions on this so uh, has this been considered or would it be considered by the Planning and Zoning Committee first? Would they see this? 
Well, if you take a look, many times if you, on large projects, that would go to the P&Z. However, if you take a look at the time frame and the everything, the P&Z would not meet in time to, for the village to have a response. Okay. It's a good note to self. Are we looking for a motion? If you would like to make a motion, you have the same three options. Uh, that would be a motion to be in favor of or have no opinion or no objection or to object to it. I guess I would make a motion for no comment on this just because, uh, you know, learning from our last experience we just had here. Um, but it is coming up quick and um, quite frankly looking at this I don't have enough information to make a decision either way so I would make a motion for no comment on this I'll second that yeah any other discussion so just to clarify, no comment just means we don't have any objection to it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it, it, it does bring, uh, and again, w what this person is confronted with is an already existing non-conforming lot. Yep. He is not, they are not making it non-conforming at all or anything. And it is intended for uh, residential use which is what is out there it's either vacant or residential that surrounds that area thank you we have a mo uh, motion in a second any other discussion roll call please trustee blue yes trustee gonzalez yes trustee horn yes trustee razik no trustee wilson Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Okay, um, item L2, I can speak to that as well. It's Gulf Vista uh, age restriction. And at this point, I may wish to defer to Attorney Grucheski on that, uh, if that's all right, Larry. Sure, no problem. Yeah. If the board recalls, uh, probably back in 1995, I know we weren't around, but there we did reach an agreement with uh, previous owners of the Gulf Vista, and there is an age restriction uh, that is part of the special use permit, and I believe probably part of the lease. The age restriction is uh, everyone in that uh, facility or project is supposed to be 55 and older and that was emphasized to uh, the lawyers that came in I don't know three or four months ago back in November when they asked for a special use permit or an amendment and uh, that was emphasized on previous letters we have determined uh, through independent investigation and through internally it appears as though that there are individuals under 55 and that community and we've documented it so I think we're on safe ground the agreement that we signed back in 1995 said if there is a violation of the uh, agreement it becomes the most restrictive zoning the most restrictive zoning is a state zoning so there are some repercussions they're going to have and also possibly monetary fines I think what we're looking for is to update the board what's what we've determined and probably indicate to the board with your blessing that we investigate this further and may have a discussion with their attorneys uh, they've been told on several occasions that this is a very important issue the sign out there on court street indicates 55 and older their advertising says 55 and older and the people who bought in there uh, bought on the premise it'd be 55 and older and yet it's been determined uh, through independent sources other governmental bodies that there are individuals under 55 and that breaches our agreement as far as we're concerned and it breaches the use and occupancy for our residents so 
if it's okay with the, uh, the mayor and the board, we'll probably have maybe a meeting or so with their council. And I think they know it's coming down the pike. So, did I hit everything? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Item L3 that appears on your agenda has to do with COVID-19 restrictions. And just basically, um, I'll read what I've put together for the board this evening. As the state of Illinois progresses into phase four of Restore Illinois, there have been complaints of businesses not adhering to phase four guidelines for operations as provided by the state. Specific complaints have been against retail businesses, especially the food service industry. The individuals making complaints have an expectation that the matter will be addressed. However, with a lack of enforcement direction from the state, it is placed upon local jurisdictions to determine how to handle the situations as they arise. A determination by the village board on the direction in, of enforcement should follow uh, uh, and would provide the necessary information needed to answer any of the complainant's questions uh, of complaints of this nature. I have a little information that I, I can uh, provide, or I think I do. <laughs> and basically under COVID-19 and utilizing our current municipal code, we are able to address the situation. Rather than the uh, department heads taking that uh, into their own hands, uh, virtually the, my, my position, uh, the administrator taking, making that decision, because it is a unique situation, it's better brought before this board for uh, collective action. Under our current zoning, uh, correct me, under our current code, under section 3-1-17, under the business licensing code, there, nuisances are prohibited. And it states generally that no business or establishment, whether or not licensed, shall be so conducted or operated as to constitute a nuisance in fact. And no building, vehicle, structure, yard, lot, premises, or part thereof shall be used, kept, maintained, or operated in connection with any business or establishment so as to occasion any nuisance or so as to be dangerous to life or detrimental to health. In that same section of uh, administration, the definition of nuisance, anything offensive to the sensibilities of reasonable persons or any act or activity creating a hazard which threatens the health and welfare of inhabitants of the village or any activity which by its perpetuation can reasonably be said to have a detrimental effect on the property of a person or persons within the community. So you have to have a business license, that's code. You have to conduct your business so as not to create a nuisance, that's code. The definition of a nuisance carries with it, as I've indicated, uh, health and welfare concerns of, in of inhabitants of the village. And also under the business licensing provision, 3-1-20, uh, there's a, a suspension, revocation of license or permit. And a part of that, item number A under that, uh, that uh, uh, code, says an order of closure of nuisance business. When the conduct or operation of any business or establishment, whether or not licensed, shall constitute a nuisance in fact or a clear and present danger to the public health, safety or general welfare, the village president shall be authorized to summarily order the cessation of business, the closing of the premises, and the suspension of any license or permit for a period not to exceed 10 days. Along with that is there is due process, there is an appeal process, there is a hearing involved. Uh, so it's just not a uh, shoot from the hip type approach. The question that's before the board this evening is how to handle, how would you like uh, the, the municipal employees to handle the complaints that are received when there is an expectation that that complaint is going to be addressed in some way, shape, or form. Um, if they would like us to, as it pertains to COVID, follow the code, um, then we can certainly do that. 
my suggestion would be proper notification to all businesses that uh, do retail sales to the public, deals with the public directly, um, so that everyone understands that what, what we're expecting. You also have the opportunity to take the approach that the state has taken, and that is elect not any enforcement action at this point. Um, it's a tough decision, but um, you know, uh, personally, uh, uh, within our, our own uh, uh, department heads uh, have witnessed that taking place. We've had complaints from outside, so um, it's probably something that, that should be addressed one way or the other at this point. I am happy to answer questions. Um, <clears throat> Administrator Wallace, a couple questions. Do the guidelines, the phase four guidelines, are they on the same level as law? That's a question for the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I, when I saw those eyes, I said, okay, here we go. Uh, I believe they're guidelines. The, the, the state, and they're in a tough spot, same city of Chicago, same with ourselves. They're guidelines. Uh, and if you notice, in my opinion, it seems as though enforceability has been an issue. I think the way the administrator is approaching it, though, I, I think it's probably the safest and most conservative uh, aspect because as you can tell with phase three phase four I think Chicago's going back to phase three tomorrow uh, or Friday I should say uh, a nuisance I think you can argue or at least uh, indicate that because it does say public health and safety and it, it appears as though that there is an issue with public health and safety and you give them prior notice and they have concern I think that's probably the best way of approaching it so they are guidelines, and I, I did thank you for that mm -hmm. clarification. You know, uh, I know this is mainly in the food service industry, I noticed that, but when you go to a restaurant, I think you have to remove your mask to eat. So I'm not sure what the concern is on that. Now, I, I understand that uh, some people are uncomfortable with uh, with how other people uh, view this, uh, these phase four guidelines. And I always emphasize in, in my personal life to be respectful to everybody where they are at in this, in this um, tumultuous times, as I've said before. Um, but I also feel like, you know, if you're, you're uncomfortable with people around you who may or may not be wearing a mask, because they're eating or talk because they're eating then they should not go to that establishment um, uh, I think we uh, but I but I again I'll just repeat I want to be respectful to those who may be more susceptible to the uh, this uh, disease but again go back it is a guideline the state's not enforcing it. I don't see how we can enforce it um, if they're not. Can I say, I'm sorry, after no, you. Um, I think the going into um, phase four, when you go into a restaurant, you're supposed to wear your mask to go in, and when you sit down, take it off to eat. Um, as a resident, I want to support my local restaurants. I love eating out. Um, but I do expect the restaurant to take the necessary steps to keep me safe. And that would be for servers to wear masks and for um, people handling food to wear masks and gloves. Um, there are restaurants in the village I won't go into until they do that because they're plainly not, they're, they're, they're plainly not taking care of me. Uh, they may be following their own rules. I'm not questioning that. But in terms of safety, as Administrator Wallace um, shared, I think we we can expect a level of responsibility from our um, uh, food vendors to take care of us. And if that means that servers and food handlers wear masks and gloves, I don't see that's a big issue. How can we support them if they're not going to keep us safe? or make an effort to keep us safe. So I don't think the issue is whether you take your mask off or 
eat with it on i'm sure that's not the question the the issue is the food handlers and the servers um it's up to the restaurant to to, to decide what they want to do with people coming in if they deny them a service which of course um most of our retailers are now um uh, uh, they're, they're denying them that and that because they want to keep their employees safe it's not because they want to lose your business I've heard so many people say well I'm never going to shop in there again well they're just keeping their employees safe and it's their right to do that just like it's your right not to wear a mask so um, I would like to see some kind of enforcement um, along the lines of a warning and uh, something with a business license if they don't um, if they don't uh, make every effort to keep us safe and I will echo almost exactly what Janet has just said to um, I, I think the expectation to, for all of us to stay safe if I'm going to um, walk into any kind of establishment here that I want to support if they're working to keep us safe too so we can support them and I will you know um, firsthand knowledge that I have gone in the employees of the establishment um, even behind a counter that isn't you know they have a mask on but they're not wearing them and all the the guests of the stores are made to wear them so I would you know echo the same thing and maybe um, even a letter a guideline letter for all of our business owners that that we're in phase four we certainly don't want to go backwards in Will County too right so I think um, a letter drafting a letter you know we are looking aboard at this to uphold these guidelines so we don't have to go backwards and you know lock ourselves up for another couple months I think it's a very testy subject but we are the officials that are responsible to run this village the way we think it should be and I concur with the two ladies a thousand percent and when you do go in to eat at a restaurant of course you have to take your mask off and of course there'll be more than two or three people sitting at a table if a family comes in but keep the six foot spacing of go. the tables yeah. that's part of the governor's recommendation and we have a, a nuisance <coughs> ordinance that covers that so I want to see us my opinion mandate this stuff now yeah. here we go all our departments are extremely busy and we're gonna have to be going to the businesses to give them a letter I believe I don't no. think an email or anything that works and let them know that I think there's going to be a penalty if they don't follow the rules I think and even a, a mail it to every license owner well whatever it may be yeah. uh, you know but uh, I see nothing wrong with uh, if they don't abide by it after the letter a warning the next time some kind of a penalty whether it's a financial penalty or shutting their business down for what Larry was saying of uh, 10 days I don't know if I want to go that far but we have to let them know that if we want to do something that we mean it and we're going to enforce it you know a third time oh boy that's when you got to really think about it because <laughs> apparently that business owner doesn't care and I think we have to be very strong on our our third step so that's my take on it. Uh, and Mayor, just one more thing on that. Um, we've worked really hard. Our numbers are really good in Will County. We've worked really hard to maintain those numbers. And um, many other counties don't have uh, numbers like ours. And it's because people are, more and more people are adhering to that guideline of putting masks on to keep your neighbor safe who, whoever that is and so we don't want to go back we've just opened the restaurants again we all talked about how terrible it was that they were closed and then we could get out onto the patio and then we could go inside so all we're doing is we're trying to keep them open that's the whole point because if the numbers keep going Thank up <laughs> we'll go back to three so if, if I could comment um, from last Tuesday to this Tuesday our uh, our COVID update increased by two and uh, to me that that's a good sign uh, due to the fact all the free testing that's been going on so you know we're we're holding our own here uh, that gets updated every Tuesday on a web on our website and uh, you know so that that's a good thing but there's other things that there that the any establishment can do you know you have the face shield an, an example for booth seating 
you know, employers may use consecutive booths to serve patrons if unrelated parties, only if the employer installs an impermeable barrier with a height of six feet or greater from the floor between the booths. So you can put a little plexiglass, you know, between there and you can maximize your, your seating. And um, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not uh, at this, at my level here, I, I'm not for or against, I'm here to present the information you are the decision makers and the, you know it comes from they are guidelines and it does come from uh, the state from the Illinois Gaming Board the, you know the video gaming terminals are supposed to be separated by uh, some sort of plexiglass uh, impermeable surface that can be easily cleaned and so forth um, you know we have several of those in the community and uh, so you know the, the guidelines are out there we're happy to to uh, direct uh, anyone to the to the proper uh, 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 venue in which to get this information and so that they can continue their business but that's all I have to say yeah, I agree we have to have some kind of standard or guidelines to and be a transparent with that to the business owners we're assuming that the business owners know what we want will follow state but if you leave it open to interpretation that's exactly what happens it's interpreted their way and usually it's in their favor as far as occupancy or um, social distancing and I, I've seen some pretty crazy um, explanations of what how they were operating but not in our town uh, by the way but um, I and you'd be surprised I mean, you go to Naperville and you thought the thing was wide open um, I just didn't understand it and the rationale behind it but if you leave it open to interpretation that's exactly what will happen so if we're transparent where we stand we stand with the state guidelines then they know so knowledge is power I'm sorry but I don't feel the village should be policing or enforcing a non-law to for our restaurants to be wearing masks let the Will County Health Department handle that we have no business enforcing that and finding our businesses and shutting them down for 10 days that's BS I like living I don't know about you everywhere they go okay, look what happened when Nazis. they opened up Florida 10 times more than they ever had before everybody had opened up a beach or any kind of a big thing it skyrockets come on Anthony I'm sorry I totally I'm sorry, disagree with what we should I'll give you my take on it I'm very law. strong about my feeling it's not the law why it's should we necessary. be necessary Come I know on. I had to tell you to put your mask on. I know where you stand. <laughs> I, wear one, I don't stands. wear a mask all day at work. All right, this is the problem with the human race. Yep. Can, this can is I, America, land of the can free. I, um, Remember that. Can I just comment on that? Please I don't do. think we're looking to enforce a non-enforceable law. Oh, that's I what Jimmy's talking no, about. No, I think we're looking <laughs> to, um, to keep our residents safe under the nuisance ordinance that okay, we have of safety shutting and them down for 10 days like Wallace just said no we didn't decide on we that. haven't decided that Anthony. no one decided on that there's no so 10 day right now you guys were talking about that's it, something so. i mentioned yeah. that's yeah. all nothing's been it decided could be less on that. than that yeah. but they no, need to be penalized somehow everything shouldn't be penalizing if we decide to do well this. so you look at the other side of the coin one of our restaurants in the village uh there was so much on facebook about oh my gosh no one wore masks in there well guess what no one's going to that restaurant now because no one wear masks wore masks if they addressed the restaurant owner and said if you make all of your servers and your food handlers wear masks we'll all come in yeah. wouldn't they rather have that okay. wouldn't they rather have the business I think they would. So I think well, that's business wise a heck of a lot more people agree absolutely. with the mask than disagree. And, and we want so we want go. as we much normalcy as we can get. And I think you nailed it because a, Wait, a could you write that down, Denisha? <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Horn said I nailed well, it. Well I I I'm I because a business <laughs> owner is in business mm -hmm. to make money. Mm -hmm. So he's going to he doesn't want to drive customers away. So he's going to make, uh, he or she is going to make the choices uh, that is they deem best for their business. So if there's a lot of complaints about non-mask non wearing, uh, he will uh, change that procedure or business will dry up for him. I, I, my point is, I guess, that I think that the guidelines and, and people's feelings on this will guide the business owner. I don't think we need to be involved in this because it's it's a guideline. Mm -hmm. It's not a law. 
Do we really want to have our police going into businesses and conceivably, conceivably shutting down the business for up to 10 days? Well, if you have, uh, let's say you have a business in town, a restaurant, a facility, and you, you know, right now we're at 50, we're at 50 persons max. You have 50 cars in the parking lot and you have about 100 people in the place, what are you going to do? Just let it happen? It is a guideline. It's not a law. Yeah. Well, that's that's something that we need to consider then, because if that's happening and it's happening on a regular basis, then that needs to be addressed. Well, the other thing is those hundred people are going to leave that restaurant and go out to visit all those other people, and then suddenly, uh, that's what's causing the situation with the current wave of uh, COVID cases. So I think the simple the it's really simple. It's about safety for our residents. It's our responsibility as elected officials to keep our residents safe, and this is a safety issue. That's how well, I see it. Larry would like to say something. Just one matter of clarification. Uh, I, I know it was mentioned about the 10-day closure. That's an extreme measure, okay? Right. What we're trying to do is give him or her notice saying these what the, we ex uh, expect. The next issue might be another letter, then a citation, but I don't think anyone's advocating a complete shutdown. You always give him or her proper notice, saying these are the rules and regulations we expect adherence to. And at that point in time, they don't, then you issue a citation. Then if the citation doesn't work, the last measure anybody wants to do would be to shut down a business. Even like Mr. Wallace indicated, you shut down a business, they still have the right to appeal. So there's due process, but our, our, we want to be proactive and indicate this is what the guidelines, this is what we expect. That doesn't work, then a ticket. That doesn't work, then you say, okay, we have a hearing for revenue. Even if you suspend someone's license, they're entitled to a hearing. So it's not, you haven't abide by the rules, you're gonna be shut down. That doesn't, it's not like that. In fact, uh, uh, Mayor Lightfoot gave a two weeks notice about going from stage four to stage three and that's she's under tremendous pressure to do something but she they don't do it immediately you always give someone advance notice so you defeat the argument there's a lack of due process so I just want to make that clear it's not we're going and shut knocking the door we're not doing that so and if we do have these guidelines or at least set you know like a, a, a skeleton or an outline of what our expectations of the guidelines are in stage four so 30 days from now if will county keeps doing as well as we can we could you know progress you know like i said we want to keep progressing in the whole thing if we have people not adhering to these guidelines um it's going to take us longer to be able to you know to progress so um and yes i don't think enforcement or however you want to say a, a ticket or a citation or shutting somebody down but at least if we let like janet said has transparency that we let them know that we are thinking and we are watching. Dude, that's chilling. <laughs> Big brother, thank you very much. <laughs> so I mean, I, I guess that I, I, you know, I, I guess where I'm at too. If we get complaints with the village, yes, we've got to go to the businesses. We've got to let them know that we've received complaints. I guess my biggest question is who is that going to fall on is it going to fall on the police department is it going to fall on building services who is it going to fall on to be the in, the enforcers for this because i think that's going to start to determine too the extent of which we can you know you know upgrade if we have to because of non non-compliance and I, I think our police department is taxed enough i just can't see having our police department be yeah, the ones to go and, and, pat and patrol the restaurants I, I think uh, Larry's procedure is, is okay, but down the line you've got to be a penalty if they're not listening. If you give them three different warnings, a, a warning, then a citation, and I forget the other thing, pretty soon you, you have to do something. Okay, and we have the right to do it because it's in our ordinance. Do we need to uh, make an, uh, and that's a good point, do we need to make a specific ordinance turning these guidelines into ordinances? Because guide, guidelines according... Are saying no? I, I would it's respectfully indicate no because it's more reactive 
as to being proactive. We have something on the books already. If we do something now, I think a business owner would have the right to say you're doing it, uh, not with a basis. And when you have something on the books already that's been on the books for 30 years. Which we have. Which, and I, most villages have do this type of nuisance ordinance where public health is being jeopardized. I think that gives us a stronger argument. If you, we do the COVID guidelines, maybe the hearing officer might even question that. I don't think he or she could question the ordinance, the nuisance ordinance. Thanks, sir. So, Mr. Mayor, if I might, once again, <clears throat> the reason it's before the board is not because the, of the ordinances that are on the books. It's the interpretation of that. When those ordinances were written, I'm sure that uh, no one ever thought of COVID-19 or a pandemic of this nature. It's the interpretation of that. And we could, we being department heads, we could interpret it uh, as it's written and take action on our own. And uh, this board may or may not be pleased with that. The reason we are here is because it is available, the enforcement action is available, but the decision whether to determine COVID-19 poses a public health threat is better left here, and the enforcement portion of that is better left here for that decision than your individual department heads. The way that this would, uh, the attorney asked me the question, how, do, how would this work? It's not to use the police department. It's not to come down heavy-handed. It's to give fair, equitable warning uh, if the board decides to do this uh, type of enforcement. It's to hand deliver the letters. It's through building services that, that that would be handled. And any public employee that happens to walk into a business could certainly report back, but mainly through building services. And it's, it's to lay out the three-step process. You know, here's what we're expecting. Adhere to the, uh, to the guidelines uh, uh, found under uh, phase four, uh, Restore Illinois. You know, make your, your, your business um, modifications that are necessary to operate safely and where you can't, you maintain your six foot spacing, but people can still video game, they can still sit in booths and eat if you followed these certain guidelines. If you don't, and the board decides that it creates a public health hazard, that's where the problem comes in. And so the ordinance, the law part of it, is already in existence. It's the interpretation of that that has been brought before the board for further consideration, whether you want it to cover the COVID pandemic or not. Additionally, the process would be to hand deliver these letters, explain it. They could certainly uh, you know, call me for any, any questions but it would be, the first would be simple written warning. The second, uh, uh, we would not prefer to issue a citation because that keeps the law enforcement side out of it and we don't want to make that cumbersome. But the second might be a suspension of the business license for five days. The ordinance says you can suspend up to 10. I hear what the mayor and the, and the trustees are saying. You could suspend it for one day. You could do whatever you want. That's the guidance that we're looking for if you choose to enforce it. So a warning, you know, wow, I, I better pay attention here because I've gotten this written warning. The next level is a license, business license suspension. And if this board decides that's one, two, five, or 10 days, that's certainly up to you. I don't think it ought to be arbitrary. I think we ought to set that by, that this board ought to set it by uh, uh, administrative order. And, you know, then we go out and enforce it. If you don't determine that, that, that COVID is the nuisance and the threat to uh, the uh, public health um, that is outlined in the existing ordinance, then so be it. And we won't take any further action on it. All right, may I say that in my three and a half years as mayor, the Board of Trustees and myself, I don't vote very often, but we've made decisions because trustees get called up and things happen from the people. And boy, this is happening big time. I know I'm, I'm hearing from people to do something about this. And I'm sure most of the trustees might be. Why aren't we responding to this? 
I think we need to. And I like the idea of the letter. And in the letter we could even say what the other steps are. If there are other steps. And maybe just like you said, David, a two-day suspension or something like that. Would, would, it's, it's enough to rattle their ship, if you know what I mean. Because now there's not any profit coming in for two days. So just a thought. But I think we need to make a decision on it. Let me say that. And the point being, what should the decision be? I think you're all in agreement of a, a warning, not all, I'm sorry. I think the majority is in the ballpark for a warning. After a warning, and, and we've got to be very careful what the letter says, and we can have Larry write that, of course. And it can, there wouldn't be a problem in telling them what the next step would be. Would there Larry in a letter like that? No, I'm involved on right now, Mayor, where occupancy was supposed to be 300. There are over 1,200 people. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah. you have to be extremely mm -hmm. careful. Yes. And this is going to be, That's the main one. I can see. it's not in this village, by the way. It's someplace yeah. else. So. <laughs> so is there something we could maybe um, need a motion for approval for Larry to draw a guideline letter and maybe make some recommendations Sure. We could, we could do that. Yeah, I, I'm suggesting, uh, if I might, that uh, uh, direction be given to either enforce uh, the uh, uh, COVID guidelines under the uh, laws that exist, the nuisance law under business licensing. And uh, if, if that passes, then the next thing, I'd be happy to make a suggestion on the three steps and um, the board could vote on that. It would be, you know, but the first question is, do you want to even uh, incorporate the enforcement, the enforcement of COVID-19 under the existing nuisance law under the business licensing section in the code? That would probably be the motion right now, if someone cares to make it. I'll make that motion, Mayor. I'll second is there a second? Any discussion? I know we've hashed it quite a bit here. Heidi, you look like you're grabbing that mic. No, I'm, I'm, I was, you know, if oh, there's I'm a motion sorry. to second. <laughs> I really thought you might have wanted to say something. Well, I'll say roll call then. Chastity Horn? No way. Chastity Vasek? No. Chastity Wilson? Yes. Chastity Udris? Yes. Chastity Blue? Yes. Chastity Gonzalez? Yes. Very good. Thank you, board. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Next would be the uh, enforcement levels. <laughs> I mean, we can't, we can't walk away. We don't, we don't have any enforcement levels that are here. Uh, I don't think you want that to be arbitrary on our part. So um, if the first violation is a warning, a written warning, then so be it. That would be administration's suggestion, a written warning a business license suspension of a certain number, whether it's one day or two days for the second. But they would know that in the In advance, letter. absolutely. Yes, okay. And then the third would be another business license suspension, at which time every suspension comes to a hearing before the board, uh, before uh, you, Mayor, and a determination at any level is made whether or not the license suspension turns into a revocation. You have that authority by code. Okay. So I have a question on that. Um, I'd like to know what kind of timeline we're talking about. So if you give someone a warning, are you going to give them 30 days to get it right or what the timeline is there? But also I'd like to know what the criteria is when we are taking them from warning to the next level and from the next level, you know, how, um, who's going to make that determination and w the criteria that they have to meet either to get to the next step or, or not. Did I confuse you? Yeah, I did. Okay. So, so say, say, say uh, I just got a warning because my, my employees weren't wearing masks. When are you going to come back and check on me? Are you going to come back and check on me in 30 days? 
well, and see if be, I've adhered to could everything. Could be tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So you have to give them some kind of idea of because they're not, not going to be able to go out and, or maybe not be able to go out and get all they the need idea. to do well, I, overnight. I, I, I think that this, and any enforcement action, okay, that you look at, you always look at the ability to make that correction. Right. Okay, wearing masks is an immediate correction. Right. All right. Putting up plexiglass, you know, may take a little longer. And the history of the uh, uh, Building Services Department and uh, uh, Public Works and the Police Department is certainly not so much police because those are more determined uh, violations, but it's always how long will it take you to get that fixed? Mm. In the meantime, don't use those two booths or don't use those gaming devices, okay? Just tape them off, don't use them until you get it fixed. You know, so there is always a, an amount of reasonableness there. Um, so, so you're looking for reasonable ad adherence. Yeah, to the and that's always at the hands of the end enforcement personnel. If something is found to be unreasonable, that's why you have due process. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a hearing, and um, okay. you know the mayor's able to hear both sides of the story and so okay. forth. I just think it'd be good to put some kind of timeline in there to say well it it, it varies. whether it's overnight within three days or next whatever business it is. day yeah. how many yeah. business days i just think that that makes it more specific as well because somebody mm -hmm. said i didn't know you were coming back tomorrow or whatever it was yep. if you put it in there that you say you want to address this and it needs to be addressed immediately um we'll come back and see you within the next three days or whatever it is uh at least they know that they need to do it now Whereas if we don't put a timeline on something, I think people think, well, well I thought I, I had know. 30 days or whatever, yeah. So, that's all. Okay. Yeah. I, I would like, they would be comfortable with seeing another rung in the ladder as far as like a verbal, then a written, mm -hmm. and then going into the action. Yeah. That's just me personally. Well, the thing about a written to me, Mike, is they got in black and white what's going to happen next time. Okay? And I think verbally, oh, you didn't say that. Or I didn't understand that. Well, but there's always can documentation. Warning, can be documentation what, what for a verbal warning. I like it written. I'm sorry. I really would. It's just my opinion. I'm one person here. I would like to see it go to a fine before it goes to a closure of a business. Okay, I think what? go to a fine rather than even even forcing a business to close for a day. In, I mean, businesses right now are scrambling for absolutely every penny they have to try to keep their doors open. I think some of these businesses, we even make them shut for a day, we potentially lose that business closing for good. And I, so I, to try to work it a little bit more, I would like to see some sort of monetary fine in between the written warning and, and closing their business. The only thing with a fine, if they're going to ask how much is the fine and they're going to contemplate, is it worth me staying open? And incur the cost of the fine or to do business, conduct business. Uh, that's right, that's but they're also going to know after that fine they continue to do it, they are going to get shut down. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's trying to kind of balance working with them versus also getting them to try to, try to act in a safe manner. Just a point of clarification. Are we penalizing, or you, because I didn't vote for this. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you penalizing businesses for customers not wearing masks or staff? All. Or both? Enforcing, yes. Enforcing the guideline. Okay. Yes. Definitely. I don't know how you introduce a uh, financial penalty in this process. We can tweak it if we have to. Yeah, you know. I, I believe in being cautious, you always want due process. I yes, can't yes. overemphasize that. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, like everyone indicated, this is there's still a business in the village, and they're serving our residents. Uh, I think it takes some time to draft uh, a good letter. And I think there's a lot of good comments made here, like Mr. Horn just indicated, or Trustee Horn, about you enforce it against the business owner or because they're not taking care of the patrons. Um, and 
we've, we've, the one thing you always want to do is progressive. You don't want to go from verbal to, oh, by the way, can you shut down tomorrow? You want, that's extremely important, you know, and the judge would say that, because you want to give him or her the opportunity to address their uh, Our concerns. lack of compliance. Yeah. So I think it's, Mr. Wallace is very good at drafting letters. He, he can have it done by Friday, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, it'll take a while. It, it's we'll, something we'll, that's we'll got to be here. We'll still be here. Yeah, we'll still be here. We'll still be here. Trust me, Wilson has more parts. I got No, I, I think I'm it's making my two legs on. Oh, yeah. There are certain <laughs> issues that have to be addressed, and even after a letter is done, someone's going to come up, and, and rightfully so. Oh, by the way, did we think about this? Did we think about that? Sure. And hopefully, if it's if it's done correctly, and the, and the businesses see that we're not trying to be punitive. What we're trying to do is watch out for our residents along with the corporation. You know, I, I just think a letter, uh, I think myself and Mr. Wallace can talk, get some ideas, draft a couple versions, and I, I believe everyone will have some comments even thereafter. So it's just, just an idea. And I would say <laughs> take take plenty of time to do that. <laughs> so Trustee Horn can hand deliver them. Well, well, Doug, I know you're so concerned. Well, I think we should have we'll a special meeting on this the next day after we get the letter. <laughs> okay, anyway. Pigeon service. Do we, uh, we need some direction here. Do we want to, uh, do we need a motion to ask Larry to draft a letter into you and your Larry? No. Or just? No. We understand what the board wants. Okay. We'll put something together. It'll be uh, okay. up for your review. Very good. Thank you. Let's move on. Moldy liquor. Right ahead, sir. <clears throat> Larry, you want me to start that off? Yeah, okay, item number four under new business is VPP Incorporated, which is Moni Liquor. It's a review of the redevelopment provisions. Um, basically, the original redevelopment agreement uh, occurred on July 12th, 2017 with this, uh, this village. That's a uh, redevelopment agreement uh, with uh, VPP there. So the substantial completion date as outlined in the uh, redevelopment agreement was December 31st of 2017. The amendment to the RDA, the redevelopment agreement, uh, was done on February 12th of 2020. And at that point, the village did make partial payment. And I would like to say that from July 12th through February 12th, uh, 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 July 12th of 17 through February 12th of 2020, progress was continually made there. So they didn't meet the substantial completion date. However, it was ongoing. The progress was ongoing. So it was not brought to the municipality, to the board's attention at that time. Uh, however, uh, so at the amendment date of February the 12th, the village made a partial payment uh, of the TIF reimbursement amount and the project was to be completed. Uh, under section 10, before I get to that, so the, sub the, the project was to be completed. The reason this is before you this evening is the project is not complete. This is a redevelopment agreement. It has to do with tax, it involves tax dollars, and uh, we're saying that the VPP is in default of the redevelopment agreement. Section 10, uh, the default in remedies allows 30 days to comply after notification. Now, I met with, uh, with uh, uh, the owners of, uh, the owner of uh, one of them, of Moni Liquor, and it's having some trouble with uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, general contractor. We're doing our best to give the proper guidance. Uh, Frank and I met. We're given the proper guidance. We are on both of these projects that are before you. We are inches away from the goal line. However, it doesn't close the redevelopment agreement, and we have an obligation to do so. So what uh, I'm uh, notifying the board that, uh, that uh, VPP Inc. Moni Liquor Depot is in uh, default of the uh, redevelopment agreement, asking permission, authorization that the uh, municipal attorney uh, write the appropriate letter of notification. What happens after that is there's 30 days to comply after that. 
and with anything if on the 35th day we are you know a millimeter from closing I don't think uh, that the village is willing to take any action at that point but we've got to get this off dead center and close these projects out it's been from 2017 that's is that uh, is it paving that needs to be done there it is paving uh, removal of pavement paving uh, there were some inspections that uh, weren't done uh, but and uh, uh, the the work had been done without calling for inspections and so Frank has worked with him and gotten through that so it's the removal of paving the regrading of the lot repaving of everything installation of some um, uh, pipe bollards which protects the sign from getting mm -hmm. hit and so forth um, and the uh, fencing of the uh, trash uh, receptacle, uh, the large trash receptacle. And that would pretty much wrap it up. Striping up the light too. Oh yeah, that's, yes yeah, sir, all, pa all part of the paving. Okay. So. You know, I guess my only comment is, I mean, we've, we've given other people, a, I mean, I'm all for getting things off, like you say, off, off dead center and moving them forward but we've given other um, companies a lot of leeway in the past and so um, I, I would hate to like you say on day 32 versus 31 it's complete what if it's day 61 I mean um, I think the letter is probably a good idea to to um, let them know and like you said you've you've met with them but I, I would not want uh, a week or two after the deadline to kill the deal well to me he's had plenty of time to resolve this a lot more than 30 days and I don't know why I mean if we say 30 days and it, it it's pouring rain and what have you and they can't work on the lot properly I'm sure we're going to extend it without going to the board sure you know because they're working on it and showing progress but uh, this involves money for them and us believe yeah. it or not this is also the projected site that Mays was supposed to go on which went into continuation and after continuation so I could see there's going to be he was probably banking on some of that revenue, that business being open, but it never came. So I, but it is, sounds like they're going to be compliant by the end of this sometime soon. Is that's what I'm assuming. Um, so uh, the letter is just a formality at this point. Well, I do know that um, paving companies, correct me if I'm wrong here, close down during the winter. So there's there's six months yeah. where you cannot get this done. So. Right. You know, I don't know. They're in they're in the height of business season, so I right. So I don't know how, what company is using, or you know how that company is stacked up for business, and and so I there's a little bit more questions in my mind. Um, well, they're paving like crazy, Doug. And if he has to get another contractor, he has to. I mean, who we just want it done? So Dave, you're saying they're millimeters away from the goal line. So as Michael said. Um, the letter is a formality and we're just to close out the business you know just to let them know yeah I, I I think truthfully the letter is part of a contract that mm -hmm. has been entered into between VPP and the village of Moni it's a legally binding contract um, the letter is is outlined in there gives 30 days for um, remedy and you know I, I would hope that you would trust that good judgment would prevail that if it's been raining for a week that uh, you know we're not going to hold it to 30 days it's it's just that I think that over a period of three years here there's been with uh, many problems uh, uh, not only on this this site but maybe some personal problems that you know everyone knows the last 10% uh, mm -hmm. of a project takes 90% of your time mm -hmm. right that's where we're at so I you think, want direction? I think that letter will help push this across the finish line that's all so I would make that motion to get the letter done I second. second that any other discussion 
If not, roll call, please. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Ugis? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razor? No. Thank you. Item uh, L5 is JPEL Inc., uh, which is the uh, uh, Sheets Chiropractic and Labas Latte and Vino project. Uh, review of the redevelopment provisions. Again, it, those were passed on the same day, July 12, 2017, with a substantial completion date of December 31st of 17. Uh, he didn't, uh, Mr. Sheets didn't make that. Um, there was a first uh, amendment to the redevelopment agreement on April 26th of 18, which extends the time to completion uh, to October 1st of 2018 didn't make that however there was movement and it was continuing it was slow but sure and um, we have now reached a uh, a stalled point and again we're just trying to knock this off dead center there is a reimbursement uh, total reimbursement uh, with uh, that that partially has been paid there is an outstanding amount of ninety seven thousand five hundred dollars that has yet to be paid upon completion and uh, I believe we have already issued a uh, letter, which is what prompted the um, uh, amendment, if I'm not mistaken, the extension of time. Um, and section nine in this uh, contract uh, is the default and remedy section, and it's identical to the previous one. It's a 30-day notice. Again, Really, all that needs to be done is the parking lot needs to be uh, 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 straightened out and, and filled in in some spots, the top coat put on, and uh, the uh, uh, trash uh, receptacle needs to be enclosed uh, with the fence from public view. Um, once again, we're, we're super close, and I would ask the board to uh, authorize the attorney to uh, draw up a letter of uh, noncompliance and default I guess it's called and send that out so that we can get this going one quick question that 97,000 is that a payment to us or a payment to him uh, a payment to the business to the business well actually it's a payment to the mm. note holder mm. okay from us, from us. Oh, gosh, it's yes. a TIF payment yes ma'am I would make that motion mr. man second a second any other discussion I just wanted to say one thing. I, I think that from the work that we've done on all of these, uh, the letters and the, the TIF payments is fair and consistent. And even though we know both these businesses and nobody wants to, you know, send them a letter with, with news in it that says you got to, you know, finish the job. I think it is fair and consistent and I think it's, it's reasonable to do that. Is there a second? Oh, we had a second. Yeah. You did? We have a first and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Idris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Yes. Trustee Razik? No. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Thank you. And the last item under the uh, new business item L6 has to do with Lairway Communication Center. Uh, uh, rescind uh, our letter of withdrawal. Uh, at the November 13th, 2019 Village Board meeting, a letter indicating the intent of Moni to withdraw from the Lairway Communication Center was authorized due to existing problems within that center. And since that time, great strides have been made in the performance of the dispatch center. Although there remains improvements to be made and with no viable alternative for an alternate dispatch center at this time, it is recommended the Village of Moni remain at the Lairway Communication Center for emergency call taking and dispatch services. The motion uh, requested this evening is to authorize uh, myself to write a letter rescinding the letter of intent to withdraw, which was authorized on November the 13th, 2019. I have a comment after. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. I'll second. Discussion. Can you tell us what improvements they've made? Yes. Yes, yes I can. They have, uh, they have uh, certainly beefed up their um, dispatching staff, have weeded out uh, non-performing 
personnel. Um, uh, we have a new, uh, uh, and she was there at the time, but is new uh, center manager. And there have been many equipment problems that have been uh, resolved by her being there. So it is a lengthy process. There are 33 organizations that are dispatched out of there and uh, the G33 it's called. And um, one reason I have faith in it is uh, uh, I have uh, been elected as chairman of the uh, G33 board, so um, I'll do my best to uh, to straighten things out and uh, and keep it on the straight and narrow. And uh, but there there's good improvements, and um, I'm I would just like to say that maybe it didn't, in all fairness, that conglomeration of 32 agencies to start out didn't get the right governance in starting off. And it takes, you know, once you start down a path, it, it's a lot to change the course. And uh, I firmly believe that course is changing. And uh, so hopefully Chief can attest to that a little bit, uh, not having too many problems, uh, as was early on. May I also add to the letter we allowed David to send, was also sent by other communities. They were a little fed up with what was going on. May I use that word? So anyway. Well, that was going to be my question. If I remember correctly, when we authorized that letter, there were several other communities that had followed suit. Correct. Are there any other communities that have rescinded their letter yes. as well? Yes. The majority of those communities have, and I believe that we have uh, in the process of one uh, organization that may look to be dispatched from a different entity. Um, but that's it. So... All the, all the other letters have been rescinded. So, so when residents call in, they're not put on hold or get a busy signal? <laughs> I mean, I, that was the issue. I, I understand. That, that was, was one, one of the, the issues. One of the many well, issues. Yes. Right. And part of that issue was found to be an equipment problem with, uh, with uh, the 911 system. So, you know, there's a lot of layers that go into this, and it is, it's intricate. Hopefully that does not occur again. Any other discussion on it? Roll call, please. Trustee Blue? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razek? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Okay. Is there any other new business? If not, we'll move on to open to the public, uh, non-agenda items, anything you'd like to talk about to us. We are actually glad to hear from you. We like input. Okay, with that, I'll say that uh, I need a motion to close the open meeting and we'll go into executive session. Second. I'll second. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. People have to remind me of things. Uh, I have to mention why. We're going to executive session for 5-1-LCS, 120-2-C-5 purchase or lease of real property for the use of the, our public body. At least they tell you in English what it's about <laughs> at the end. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Razek? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Blue? Yes.